most people are not really hurt by the world. They're hurt by their own expectations. Uh, I read somewhere that H.G. Wells was very disappointed in people. He felt we would have arrived at more of a scientific community than what we have today. But what hurt him was not the world, it was his expectations. He expected people to lean more toward science and less toward metaphysics. And he suspected that the system would be, would gather intelligence and know the right direction. So what really hurt him was his own expectations. The real answer to that question is Whatever happens in the world is real. What you think should happen is not real. So you're not disappointed by the world, you're disappointed by your own projections. If you meet a person, you say, there's a wonderful person, and they turn out to be different than you suspected, you get mad and you say, she isn't that wonderful, or he isn't that wonderful, and it's your own projections that you're mad at. The right way to look at a person is, I don't know enough about them to make a judgment. And in time, when you make a judgment, uh, you say, up to now, they appear to be so-so. But uh, something may come back that reminds them of something else. So they hurt you. They really don't hurt you. They're normal. That is normal to their values. Like my mother would believe in religion because it's normal to her background. And when things get tough, she prays, rather than, because she doesn't know what else to do. What you have to do is take time out and try to inform people as to how to look at things. It may take you two or three years to do that. But we would expect to find people that understand what we say. When they shake their head, I guess, that doesn't mean they understand. It means they understand a limited amount. So, the point is, what are your expectations? Now, in chemistry, if you mix certain things together, certain things happen at a certain temperature. At different temperatures, the same thing doesn't happen. You can get mad and throw the experiment on the floor if you don't follow the rules. So, if a person wants to be more analytical, they have to learn how to say, I don't know, or up to now, everything seems to be okay. My relationship seems to work out in many different areas, or more areas than I expected. Sometimes we're pleasantly surprised by the reaction of people we had a negative view of. I may have a negative view of you. But in time, observing what you do, my negative view becomes a positive view. But if I have a negative view, it means I was projecting. I really don't know. So the point is, when events occur that are tough, if a person deserts you at that time, you understand that they can't live under those conditions. They're not bad people, they revert back to their conditioning. Now, reverting back to their conditioning means if, if the world is catastrophic, if a man is shot and he's laying in the battlefield, he says, I hope the first aid people come soon. I don't feel very good. They don't come, if they don't come soon, he says, where the hell are they? He expected them to come sooner, but they come as soon as they can come, whatever that is. And if you can't take it, you can swear all you want to, but if you keep continue to swear and continue to get angry, they're apt to arrive during that period. And you say, well, it's, it's my prayers, because I hoped they would come and rescue me. That goes for... H.G. E. Wells had a scene in the movie, I think it was called The Shape of Things to Come in which a pilot shot down a German pilot, or another pilot, and he went over to the plane crash, and the guy was uh, 
very ill. He couldn't leave. He says, the plane is going to explode and I'm badly damaged. So this guy gave him a gun to shoot himself. And the motion picture, airmail. There was a guy caught in an airplane, he couldn't get out, it was burning. So the guy shot him twice. The guy loved him, but he didn't want him to burn to death. Is that murder? What is it? If everybody claimed he was suffering so much from cancer, I shot him. Is that love? How do you talk about love? Do you know what I mean? If a person is suffering from cancer, he says, please, take my life. The doctor says, I can live three months with this condition. And you hear him crying out, suffering, and you shoot him. Are you a murderer? Are you kind? All those words are very difficult to deal with. It depends on the situation, depends on how attached you are to the person. If you don't give a damn about their suffering, you know what I mean? So when people begged certain doctors to take their lives. They were suffering too much. It was too much on their family. They didn't have a bank account to pay for this medical condition that they were under. And they said, please end my life because the pain is unbearable. And the Bible says you're not supposed to take a life, no matter what the pain is. That's your entry into heaven, especially in India. A person is suffering a great deal, they're paying off their karma. If you end that, you shoot them. They can't pay off their karma. So, well, you got all these crazy things that you are exposed to, and you use your logic thinking that it makes sense. It only makes sense if a person says, I see your point, but I'm unable to accept it emotionally. There are people like that, that can't do that. They can't shoot their father, even though he's suffering, because it says, thou shalt not kill. And they figured even though they shot their father that was suffering, they committed a crime against God. So, remember, it's your own expectations that hurt you, not the world you live in. Whatever happens in the world is real. What you think should happen is unreal. So people are hurt by their expectations. Any questions about that? If you have reasonable expectations, such as I don't know, then whatever happens, you say, gee, I didn't think it would be that bad. How do you know how bad it would be? Whatever happens, no matter how bad it is, if 50 kids are killed in a bus crash, that's a problem. Why were they killed? The bus slipped off an icy highway. What can you do about it? I don't know. And the condition will prevail unless you come up with uh, a new way of friction tires that can't skid on icy highways. That's the best you can do. But if you made those tires and you put them on the bus and the bus still slipped, it means you got more to go. You can't say, I made icy tires, it won't slip. That's a projection, unless you test it out many times. Do you understand? So what does man really want? He really wants accurate predictability. You cannot achieve that unless you're technical. Accurate predictability. If an engine fails, it means there's something wrong with a fuel pump or any number of things. If you can't attend to those things, then the probability is that at some time or other the engine will fail. Now, I don't expect you to walk around accepting everything that happens. I expect you to be angered and say, what can I do about it? I don't know, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to make it possible for people not to be injured. I'm going to try to design a conveyor that's on the tracks and under the tracks that's locked. So even in an amusement park, the loop the loop can't go off the tracks because it's got under braces. But the under braces may be perfect, but the structure of the unit may not be. So to the ability of an individual to handle all those things, 
is very difficult. But he only knows or she only knows what to handle after the event. Do you think you know the event has to occur first, then the person makes a safety device. And he solved that problem. But there may be other problems and another event may occur that's negative. And the person says, what can I do about it? I don't know enough about it. I'm going to read up on it and try to become familiar with the nature of the problem and try to solve it. And when a person says to you, have you solved it? This is the device I made in an attempt to solve it. Will it work? Well, according to the tests I did, it will. But in reality, it was cold and the oil didn't flow, so the thing wasn't lubricated and it didn't work. There are other factors you learn about later on. That's called after the facts. So some people get mad at technicians. They say, you're a technician, why did that thing fail? What do you suggest? Is what you put to that person. If they say, you designed that unit and it failed. Yes, it did fail. Apparently, I didn't know enough about solving that problem. What do you suggest? Don't get mad at me. What do you suggest? You've done nothing but expect me to solve the problem.